This presentation will explain to you sustainability in manufacturing, and this presentation will focus on sand casting. There are a lot of main things that we will look at. Firstly, how to reduce energy consumption for sand casting. The passage discusses various ways to reduce energy consumption in sand casting, particularly in the metal casting industry. The energy consumption in the industry is primarily influenced by the efficiency of melting and heat treating processes. Implementing new processes and practices can lead to significant energy savings and a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. The first area for optimization is sand preparation, which involves drying and conditioning. To reduce energy usage, more energy-efficient technologies like fluidized bed dryers or thermal reclamation systems can be used. It is important to control the moisture content in the sand to avoid excessive energy costs during drying or poor quality molds. Sand reclamation can also be implemented to reuse sand and reduce the need for new sand, thereby lowering energy consumption. Improving the design and production of molds and cores is another way to reduce waste and energy use. Choosing materials with strong thermal conductivity and heat resistance for molds and cores enables quicker cooling and less energy consumption during solidification. Computer-aided design, CAD, and simulation tools can optimize geometry and use less material, with additive manufacturing, 3D printing, being particularly efficient in reducing energy usage and material waste. The pouring and cooling process can be optimized to increase effectiveness. Coating molds with ceramic or insulating materials can shorten the cooling time required. By optimizing the pouring process to reduce metal turbulence and increase the fill rate, energy waste can be minimized. Overall, implementing these energy-saving measures in sand casting can enhance the energy efficiency, improve casting quality, promote competitiveness in the industry, and reduce environmental pollution. Sandcasting is highlighted as an efficient and environmentally friendly manufacturing process. To reduce dependency on traditional power sources, sandcasting businesses can utilize various types of renewable energy. Solar power is mentioned as a renewable energy option, where solar panels can be installed in the sandcasting plant to generate electricity for running machinery, equipment, and lighting systems. Solar thermal systems can also be used to heat operations such as sand drying and metal melting. Wind energy is another renewable energy source suggested for sand casting businesses located in areas with sufficient wind resources. Building wind turbines can provide the electricity needed for the casting process. Biomass energy is discussed as a way to generate heat for sand drying or metal melting. Biomass sources like wood chips, agricultural waste, or biogas can be used, and biomass boilers or gasifiers can convert biomass into thermal energy reducing the reliance on fossil fuels. By adopting these renewable energy options, sand casting businesses can reduce energy consumption and contribute to a more sustainable and environmentally friendly production process. One aspect is the utilization of used sand-based molds as byproducts, which can be repurposed for making bricks, concrete, and backfill for buildings. Improving operating procedures through minor adjustments in staff procedures, inventory control, Waste segregation and preventive maintenance can lead to significant waste reductions without relying heavily on technology or materials advancements. Using recycled metal products for casting is more energy and resource efficient compared to using new metals. Recycled content castings require 95% less energy, reducing the strain on the nation's energy resources during raw material processing. Optimizing gating and riser designs helps minimize the need for extra material and reduces scrap resulting in energy savings. Properly engineered gating systems ensure smooth metal flow, lower turbulence, and minimize casting flaws, thereby reducing the requirement for rework or scrap. Controlling pouring and solidification processes is also important. Regulated pouring processes and cooling techniques, such as controlled cooling rates and the application of insulating coatings, help prevent casting flaws, maximize solidification, and minimize the need for rework. Overall, by implementing these measures, the casting process can become more environmentally friendly, reducing waste, energy consumption, and the need for raw resources. Green chemistry aims to create chemical processes and products that are socially responsible, economically viable, and ecologically beneficial. Practices such as reducing negative environmental effects, minimizing waste production, and improving resource efficiency are key to implementing green chemistry and sand casting. 
This includes selecting materials with low toxicity, emissions, and negative environmental impact. Safer alternatives to traditional sand binders that contain hazardous chemicals should be considered, and whenever possible, recyclable and ecological materials should be used. Substituting hazardous chemicals with greener alternatives, such as low-toxicity coatings and binders, is recommended. Water-based or solvent-free products should be chosen whenever feasible. Utilizing clean and efficient methods, such as environmentally friendly release agents, is also encouraged. By incorporating these green chemistry principles, the sand casting process can become more environmentally friendly, reducing its impact on human health and the environment. Sand casting techniques that include green chemistry principles must take into account the usage of environmentally friendly, sustainable materials. The sustainable materials for sand casting are green sand, also referred to as natural sand or molding sand. It consists of bentonite clay, water, premium silica sand, and organic additions. Green sand is recyclable and may be upgraded by including new materials, which minimizes trash production. Other than that, recycled sand where incorporating recycled sand into the sand casting process helps reduce the demand for virgin sand and conserves natural resources. Sand reclaimed from previous casting operations or sourced from other industries can be reused after appropriate cleaning and treatment. The last example is the biodegradable binder, which is a traditional sand casting that often uses chemical binders that can be harmful to human health and the environment. However, there are now biodegradable binder options available. These binders, such as starch, cellulose, or other organic compounds, are non-toxic, renewable, and can be easily decomposed, reducing the environmental impact. To guarantee a successful casting process, Many elements must be taken into account while designing products for sand casting. Some elements need to focus on product design for sand casting. Firstly, design for manufacturability to make sure the design can be simply cast in a mold without being overly complex. Then, the parting line and draft angle make casting removal from the mold and mold separation easier. This enhances mold fill and release and helps prevent flaws like undercuts. Furthermore, the wall thickness should be considered an important part of sand casting because when keeping the wall thickness constant throughout the design ensures good solidification and prevent problems like warping or shrinking. Avoid stress concentrations by avoiding abrupt changes in thickness and sharp corners. Lastly, the fillet and radii were to improve molten metal flow and reduce stress concentrations, incorporating fillets and radii at strategic locations. This increases the casting's overall strength and quality. Investing in employee training leads to improvements in product quality, increased output, and overall efficiency. Various areas of training are essential for employees in sand casting. Thorough instruction on the entire foundry process is crucial, covering core creation, pattern creation, mold preparation, melting, pouring, and finishing. Employees should understand each step and their role in producing high-quality castings. Safety training is vital to ensure a safe foundry environment. Employees should be trained in handling tools, equipment, and molten metal safely. Instruction on safety measures, personal protective equipment, PPE requirements, and emergency procedures should be provided to prevent accidents or injuries. Training on mold design fundamentals is necessary, including topics like separating lines, gating and riser systems, and proper core positioning. Reading design drawings, selecting suitable molding materials, and setting up molds to meet dimensional accuracy and surface finish specifications should be taught. Lastly, employees should be trained on controlling the temperature, velocity, and direction of molten metal flow into molds. Emphasis should be placed on preventing turbulence, ensuring proper metal filling, and addressing flaws such as porosity and shrinkage. By providing comprehensive training in these areas, Employees in the sand casting industry can acquire the necessary knowledge and skills to contribute to the production of high-quality castings with efficiency and safety in mind. Life Cycle Assessment, LCA, evaluates the environmental impact of a product or process throughout its entire life cycle. In sand casting, key steps include setting evaluation parameters, gathering information on components and outcomes, understanding the impact assessment's findings, and identifying areas for improvement. Tactics to reduce negative environmental effects include exploring alternative materials, maximizing energy efficiency, implementing recycling strategies, and adopting cleaner production techniques. 
LCA helps promote sustainable practices in sand casting. It is possible to recycle and repurpose foundry sand, the sand used in sand casting, throughout the process. In order to reduce waste and improve sustainability, foundries frequently use sand recycling and reclamation methods. The used sand is often unsuitable for immediate reuse following the shakeout procedure, in which the sand mold is disassembled and the casting is removed. To get rid of pollutants and recover its qualities for reuse, it might go through a reclamation process. The reclamation process uses a variety of mechanical techniques to break up sand clusters, remove metal particles, and separate the sand from remaining binder ingredients. To clean and replenish the sand, this may entail procedures including attrition, scrubbing, and sieving. Lastly, sand that has been previously used and cleaned up can be used again in the core or mold of a sand casting project. It reduces the demand for new sand and minimizes waste production by substituting some of the fresh sand needed for each casting. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you get some pieces of information about sand casting in this video, and I wish you a nice day.